Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to cover the annuals and perennials that I have planted uh, in the front yard of this uh, new landscape that I've been working on in uh, 2020. There was a very large maple that came out of the front yard. It's a super, super sunny space now. Uh, the maple did kind of dominate the front yard and the roots. A lot of the roots are still there despite um, the fact that I, used, I had a stump grinder uh, grind it out, but the roots uh, on any kind of red maple are just everywhere. And so any place you dig in this front yard, really, uh, you're going to find those roots. I didn't want to come right back in here and plant a lot of shrubs or a new tree uh, right here and right after it had come out of the ground. So I created this uh, pretty large uh, annual bed here. There's a few perennials blended in, but it's mostly uh, annuals in this space. And then I've been adding uh, perennials on the other side for uh, pollinators for pollinators for next year and a lot of uh, color is going to be going along the road uh, in the uh, spring of next year. So I wanted to show you what I had used this year uh, and what has worked really, really well. When I do the second video for this in the backyard, you'll see that lots of that material was done from seed uh, earlier in the year. A few of those things have made it out here that you'll see in this video, but for the most part, the annuals that are in this bed, uh, this was a decision that was made after the maple came down and I didn't really have time to do anything from seed at that point. And so, you go shopping for annuals this year and there was a very limited uh, supply and ended up with this orange and red and yellow combo uh, that has really turned out amazing. Uh, it's not colors that I probably would have picked given a, uh, a full selection of annuals uh, at the store, but it has really been a showstopper every single time this red coleus shows up in, the, in a video or the background image of anything. Everybody wants to know what it is. I'll put the exact names of these annuals uh, down at the bottom uh, as we go. Uh, this is melon podium on the corner. This has done this for four months solid. You, you just there's almost no maintenance to this plant. Doesn't really need to be uh, uh, pruned on or reset or anything. It was planted in a little bit of compost, and then this area was mulched, so uh, you know had a ground covering around it. It's been watered basically and uh, has performed like that all season. Kind of hard to beat, uh, and looks incredible with this red uh, coleus that's behind it. Like I say, that's been the uh, talk of talk of every every time it's shown up in anything that I've done this year people have wanted to know uh, what that one is uh, this vinca here which is starting to slow down some uh, still still has some beautiful flowers like I say we're here in early September the days are getting shorter so it's not quite as showy as it was but uh, that thing has uh, has really been amazing all season there's two different uh, zinnias here uh, that orange one and uh, the yellow one in this combo Again, they've kind of split open a little bit in the middle, uh, as you can see right there, but they're still still super showy. Butterflies are still all over them every day. There's a, a, a mushroom uh, growing in there. And then this yellow celosia that's right there. And then most of this stuff is generally uh, repeated the rest of the way up. I'll show you a, uh, uh, a new gold lantana, yellow lantana that's on the other side when I walk around the other side of this bed. But uh, this combo has really been amazing and uh, really low maintenance. Um, you know, the zinnias and the vinca and the coleus and the melon podium and the celosia just really don't need a lot of maintenance. Just well, watering. They were fertilized uh, when they initially went in the ground, but the compost they were planted in has kind of done, uh, done the rest. So I started down there at the uh, bottom. The one thing that hasn't worked really in this bed uh, this season, and it may just be because of the amount of organic material that's in here, uh, this salvia just has not liked it at all. This is an annual. Salvia, I have tons of salvias in the yard. Some are annual, some are perennial. Uh, those will be in the, this video and the next one. You'll see lots and lots of them, but just in this annual bed for this season, uh, these did not perform uh, all that great. Uh, a lot of this uh, repeating vinca and melon podium and celosia uh, up here at the top. And then uh, there's a, 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 a yellow coleus right here. Uh, this one's looked great. There was one other in the bed that the sun kind of uh, really cooked. Um, you know, these uh, lighter colored uh, coleus don't take the sun uh, quite as well. There's a Homestead Purple Verbena in that container right there. And uh, there's a Purple Heart 
uh, in there. There's Creeping Jenny coming over that uh, container uh, right there. And if I spin around uh, to this other side, um, you'll see I got a yellow sweet potato vine uh, in that container uh, right there. And just kind of going, you know, with, with the theme, the only thing that kind of stands out here is that purple uh, verbena in that container. Um, but everything else stays in this kind of uh, red and orange and yellow uh, color combo. This uh, one other, uh, one other uh, salvia here uh, did okay, this kind of peachy colored one uh, that's right there. Uh, that, one, uh, that one did do okay. So there's most of the color here uh, on the north side. Uh, a couple things that I had done from seed are these uh, cone flowers right here and uh, then the uh, milkweed uh, right here. Both of these will be perennials that'll come back uh, next year. I've got a milkweed that, uh, that I did at the same time from seed uh, in the backyard, a couple of them that are in full bloom right now that you'll see in the uh, second video. There's actually a white picket fence going in here as part of this project. Uh, this uh, season, there's gonna be an opening right here that heads to the, uh, to the front porch and everything on the outside. Basically where I have this big showy annual bed right here uh, next year, it's going to move to the outside of the fence and that other area is gonna be planted with more permanent uh, uh, perennials and uh, shrubs. Uh, there's a couple salvia that have been planted uh, right here. This one's called Betsy's Choice right here. It's taken off really quickly. I mean, it's only been in the ground, I mean, just a few weeks, maybe, maybe, maybe a month that thing's been in the ground, but it's taken off super, super fast. That's a hardy one for my area. Another perennial salvia that's been planted down here as well. And then there are three uh, Agastache. One of them uh, is yellow uh, right here. And po pollinators absolutely go crazy for these uh, Agastache. Got uh, hummingbirds on them as well. This one kind of starts yellow and then turns pink and then uh, a more traditional uh, uh, lavender color uh, agastache right there. Uh, on the other side of this dogwood, there's a uh, Russian sage right there and it has not done as well and I think it's because of the shade uh, of this tree. I think is what's causing that, uh, maybe a little too much water. So I'm gonna pop it out of the ground and move it into a, uh, a little more sun. So I'm gonna continue on perennials since I started on the uh, cone flowers back there. I've been on perennials and uh, I'll do a few more of those and then uh, show you the last of the annuals. This is a uh, salvia right here that, uh, it's a red flowering, uh, small leafed salvia. It's been blooming like crazy. Hummingbirds went crazy for it. It has slowed down now that the, uh, the days have uh, shortened. Uh, I'll pass a couple things here and come back uh, to them. This is a Mexican salvia, tend to bloom, you know, late summer, early fall, growing like a weed right now. It'll be in full flower here. Uh, in the next week or so, uh, hardy, in, uh, hardy in my area. Here's one additional salvia that I have here that's uh, in bloom right there. Really, really beautiful. Just planted uh, a couple weeks ago, another one that will, uh, that will come back in this space. I'm gonna cross back across the uh, lawn and uh, show you real quick one thing I missed in this bed was that new gold lantana, which is spread out big time across here. It might be covering you know, eight or nine square feet uh, at this point. I had this one in the back and it was in, you know, a little bit of shade and uh, brought it out here to the full sun in the front. It went absolutely, uh, absolutely wild, but that one is hardy uh, in my area. So now there's like four more annuals, but I'm actually gonna save all of these for next year. This is that mahogany splendor uh, hibiscus. I've got several of these in the backyard. This one in right here has lost a little bit of color. It's on the green side for some reason. Um, it's in the container. Right there, it may be, honestly, it may be a fertilizer issue at this point. I haven't fertilized these in a long time. These pots are about to be switched out for fall color, and but I've taken cuttings on these, uh, and I have seed as well for next year, but I'm gonna have uh, several of these again next year. Just put on such a show. I may, in fact, do some from seed and, uh, and give them to folks. I'm kind of hard to lose with this plant. This one has not bloomed uh, for me. I know down in uh, Florida, this one has, <laughs> can be a noxious weed. It can actually come up from uh, seed uh, down there. It just hasn't bloomed for me and I haven't needed it to bloom. It's just been a beautiful foliage plant uh, all season. The next uh, one right here is this African basil, which uh, is an annual uh, here in, uh, in my area, in, in, although it is a perennial uh, basil. I've taken cuttings from this. I'm just going to overwinter the cuttings, put them back out here. Believe it or not, that was planted uh, three or four weeks ago. 
It's gone absolutely bonkers, and the bees are all over it all day long. They absolutely love this African basil. It's just uh, really, really amazing. Uh, in this container right here, this is a Plectranthus, uh, blooms purple. Uh, this one, these were not planted long enough to have been blooming, but I think during the fall here, I'm gonna get a lot of purple flowers on it, but that's a Plectranthus. That's another one I'm gonna bring up on the porch. I think I can keep, uh, keep through the uh, winter time, cut it back hard in the late winter. And then uh, I've got Diplodenia here. Diplodenia is like Mandevilla, but it's uh, less vining. I've had that in the container all season. You can see uh, the flower on it. Of course, again, late, late summer, early fall here. Uh, things are definitely slowing down, so it doesn't have as many flowers now. But I'm going to bring that one uh, up on the porch and nights it gets really, really cold. I'll bring it inside and I'll just put it in a larger pot uh, next year. So although for me, that's an annual and that's an annual and uh, that's an annual and uh, this uh, hibiscus is an annual, um, I am going to uh, get these to uh, go through the winter so I don't have to replant them uh, next year. I have a video on my channel about the difference between uh, annuals and perennials that I'll link up here in the corner. And a lot of what I talk about in that video is that one person's perennial might be some, somebody else's annual. Some of the salvias that I have in this yard uh, it, that are only hardy in zone eight or zone seven that will be perennial for me, uh, I would buy them in a second if I was in zone five. Uh, there's nothing that's gonna outbloom them. They'll bloom all summer long and uh, all the pollinators absolutely go crazy for them. I think they would be, they should be sold as annuals uh, further north. There are salvias that are hardy, that are, that are, that are winter hardy in zone five and even, even zone four, but some of these for us. So, you know, it's a perennial for somebody, it's an annual for someone else. And so that's what you'll see. I'm in zone seven B. A few of these things would definitely uh, just be perennials in, uh, you know, further south in Florida. Uh, but for me, I'm calling them annuals. But the difference is, the difference being, if the plant gets woody down at the bottom, it's a perennial somewhere. It may not be a perennial in your yard, um, but if it doesn't become woody uh, down at the base, that's typically an annual, and that's a plant that's just trying to produce seed in a single season and it literally dies uh, and comes back the following, the following year. But you may want to look at that video if you're confused about the difference between annuals and perennials. And then uh, if you'll follow my channel through the winter, I'll show you how I'm saving some of these, uh, some of these annuals. I won't save things like this melon podium because typically I can buy this uh, in a tray. I, I want the, the, the annuals that I can buy in little four packs and six packs, I'm not going to bother with them because they're so inexpensive. The things that I have to buy in quart pots and pints and things like that, those are the things I'm more interested in saving just because I want to save the money uh, the next year. But the melon podium, the vinca, uh, some of these uh, lower growing zinnias, the coleus, typically I can find them in cell packs and uh, I don't worry as much about keeping them. Although I like this red coleus so much that I took cuttings on it and I'm going to carry those cuttings through the winter. If you've been following my propagation, I've actually planted some of these already in little containers that I'm going to keep, uh, keep through the winter because I do like this red and I just, I don't know if I'll find that exact same variety next year. So look for the uh, upcoming uh, video for the, uh, for the backyard space and like i say more of that stuff i actually did from seed is which is another way to uh, save money and uh, have this kind of color in your yard during the growing season thanks for watching